Well, here's a very interesting problem that was presented to me by one of my students. The problem is they want to extract this table from a PDF file. Now that in itself is not really a problem. That's easy to do. The problem is if I zoom out, they want to extract this table from a series of PDFs. What makes it interesting is in each of these PDFs, that table is not in the same place in every file. So in this file, that table is on the first page. But in the second file, the table's on the second page. In the third file, the table's on the third page. And in the fourth file, the table's on the last page. So maybe these are tables you're pulling from different clients, and it's the same content you need from each client, but the clients don't have it in the same place every time. So how can we go through each of these PDFs, locate the needed table based on what's in the table, not based on its position or by its table name, and then bring all these tables together, merge them into a single table so we can make something like a pivot table. So let's see how we can extract tables by content, not by name or position. Download the solution file so you can get a full explanation of all the M code that I'm going to go over that will perform this extract by content query. So to extract PDF contents by specific content, these are going to be the major steps. First, we'll connect to a folder, and I'll show you how you can either scan that folder and all subfolders, or limit your scan to just the current folder. Next, we'll see how to extract the PDF metadata so we can find all of the tables. Then we'll extract the content from those tables. Then we'll discover exactly which tables we need based on some sort of content or keyword. At that point, you've solved your problem, but we'll throw in some extra steps like discovering the column names dynamically, that way if the column names are not always named the same, you're not boxed into a corner. We'll combine all of those tables together into a flat table by unpivoting them, and then we'll look at applying names to those columns based on the position of the column. Again, that way if the names don't match, you're not tied to any hard-coded names. We start with a blank Excel workbook where we go to Data, Get Data from File, and we're going to scan a folder. We navigate to the folder that holds the files, hit Open, this presents us with a list of the folder's metadata. We'll go to transform data and send that into Power Query. Let's enlarge the window and zoom in a little bit. Now here's a neat little trick that I've shown in other videos. Currently we're examining the contents of this extract PDF folder and all subfolders. So here you see the zone one through zone four statistic files. But if we scroll over to the path field, some of those are coming from a subfolder called more stat files. Well, what if we don't want the subfolder files? Maybe those are older archive files and we only want current files. If we go up into the M code and change this from folder.files to folder.contents, hit check. Now you're only scanning the current folder and no subfolders. In fact, that's what I want for this example because we're going to start with two PDFs, build our pivot table solution, then we'll add the next two zone files in, refresh the query, and see if we can discover those other tables. Now to make sure we only get PDF files, we're going to filter by extension. Now remember Power Query being case sensitive, if some of those PDF extensions were uppercase, we don't wanna to have to come in here and have to try to filter for every casing variant that an extension might be. So a safer option is to standardize the casing. So we'll right click on the extension column, go to transform, and I'll choose uppercase. You can choose lowercase, it doesn't matter. Now we can go in here and filter only for PDF files. Now, once I've extracted the tables from the PDFs and combined them all together, I need to keep track of which values came from which zone. So we're going to end up using part of this file's name as sort of a transaction level stamp. So we know exactly which transaction came from which zone. I only need the name column and the content column. And so I'll right click and remove the other columns. Make note that these two columns just change position. That's because of the order that I selected them in. So if you wanna do a resort of those two columns while you're also removing the other columns, just select them in the order you want them in the resort. So this way you get basically a two for one. Now I need to isolate the zone number from the file name. So I'm going to extract everything before the second space. So to do that, I'll go up to transform, extract, and then text before delimiter. My delimiter is going to be a space and I'll go into the advanced options and tell it to skip the first delimiter. Hit okay. And so now I've got zone one, zone two. I only want files that have zone in them. So I'll go up and do a text filter on the name column and do something like begins with and type in zone. Now, just because I want to, I'll also go in here and sort this in ascending order. Now we need to extract the metadata information from each of these binary files. So we'll go up and do an add column and I'm going to go to custom column. 
So the name of this new column will be called custom. Doesn't matter what it's called because we're going to throw it away in just a moment anyways. But I'm going to use a PDF function called tables and then point to the content column. Close parentheses, hit OK. And now we've extracted a table that contains the metadata of each of those binary files. If we peek into one of those tables, let's move this up, we can see all of the pages and tables contained within that PDF. So one of these tables is the one we look for in zone one, same thing for zone two, but those tables, remember, are on different pages and they're not named the same thing. We no longer need the content column, so we can throw that out. Next, we need to extract the contents from each of these tables. So I'll go to our expand table button. I'm not going to use prefixes and I really only need the data and the kind columns. Now we'll leave those checked for just a moment and go in here and see what we get. So I'll scroll over. All we really need are tables. We don't need entire pages. And since we're looking for the table based on what's in it, we really don't need the names of the tables or the pages they came from. So I'm going to go back to the gear and I'm gonna refine this choice. So really all I need is the kind and the data columns. Next, I'll just filter out all the pages because all I need are tables. And now the question is, when we peek inside of these tables, which one of these tables has the actual information that we need? Well, like much about Power Query, it's all about patterns. And I'm thinking that if the word January exists in a table, and that's the only table that the word January will ever occur in, then that's something I can key off of and scan each table looking for the word January. I don't need the kind column any longer since I have my tables, so we'll throw that out. Now it's time to create a test column to test each of these tables to see which ones have the word January and which do not. So we'll go up to add column, custom column. Now it's going to take three different functions to pull this off, but I wanna understand what each function is responsible for. So the first function we're going to use is a table to rows function, open parentheses, and we want to turn each of the tables in the data column into rows. So we'll close parentheses, hit okay, just to see what we get. And that gives us a series of nested lists. If we peek inside of one of those lists, every single item in the table has been stored as another mini list. Now we can't use this, so let's go back into our function and we'll wrap this table to rows function inside of a list combine function. We'll hit okay. Now when we peek into one of those lists, we actually see the content. So each table has basically been devolved into just a flat list of information. So now it's our job to figure out which of these lists contain the word January. You can see here that in the zone one file, this table has the word January in it, but the next list in it does not. So to discover which of these lists have the word January, let's go back into that function and we'll place the results of the list combine list to rows function inside of a list contains function. And we just want to see if any of those lists contain the word January. Close parentheses, let's hit okay and we get a series of true-false responses. So this particular table contains the word January right there. Pull this down. This table does not. This table does not. Neither does this one, but in zone two, the second table does contain January. So now that we've identified exactly which tables contain that keyword January, we can then go to this custom column and just filter out the falses. Hit okay. And now we found every table that has the word January in it. Now that we've filtered for needed tables, we no longer need the custom column. Now it's time to expand the contents of these tables into a single unified table. So we'll go to our expand table button. I want every single column, but I don't want table name prefixing. I'll hit okay. Now I have each of these table contents stacked. We'll use the first tables header as the header row for all tables. So we'll go up to transform, use first row as headers. And if we scroll to the right, we have a column called averages. That column held the average calculations and the grand totals. I don't want that column, so I'm going to select it and delete it. Scrolling back to the left. Now to turn this into a straight flat table, we need to unpivot all of these columns with yearly data. So I'll select zone one and column two because those are the columns that are already in the correct positions. And we'll right click and unpivot all of the other columns. Now for my analysis, I need actual proper months and year information. So we're going to combine these two columns together. So I'll select column two, hold down control, select attribute and we'll merge these columns together. And I'll merge them together separated by a space. We'll call this new column date, hit okay. And then we'll set the data type of this newly merged column to a date data type. Now these are usable dates. Now if we scroll down, we will see at some point some errors. These errors correspond to the totals in each of the previous years. Since we don't need those rows, we can right click and remove the errors. I'm going to go ahead and refine my value column to a currency data type, and we'll give these better names. We'll call this first column zone, and the last column we'll call sales. Let's rename the query, and then we'll close and load this out to a proper table. 
Now that we're back in Excel, I'll select the sales column and go up and give it something like a currency style. Now, before we bring in additional PDFs with their related tables, let's build some type of report so we can see this in action. For this data table, I'm going to go up to table design, summarize with pivot table, and I'll create a pivot table right here. Let's put date in the rows, and we'll click on one of these dates and group it by month and by year. We'll put zone in the columns, and we'll put sales in the values. Let's dress it up a little bit. We'll customize the titles. And I'll go up to design. I'll push the subtotals to the bottoms of the groups and add some blank rows. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go up to view and turn off my grid lines and turn off my headings. It just makes the report look cleaner. So now the test is, if we go into this more stat files folder and we bring in more PDFs, I'm just gonna grab all the files, copy them, and we'll just dump those files here. So two new zone PDFs worth of information, each PDF has a table that we need, but remember the tables are on different pages. Will we now be able to just right-click refresh and get new information? Notice we have 120 rows coming from the first two PDFs. If I go to the query output, right-click refresh. If I right-click my pivot table, refresh, I get two new zones worth of information. Now, if we stopped here, everything would be fine up to a point, but probably not too far into this process, we would get a failed query. And let me show you why. Currently, we're bringing in data from zone one, two, three, and four. And so those PDFs are right here. Well, what if those files are not called zone one, two, three, and four? What if we point to a different folder and they're called zone A, B, C, and D? In fact, just to prove my point, I've just renamed these PDFs to zone A, B, C, and D. If we go back into the query, right-click refresh, we get a failed query because the query is looking for the file called zone one. Hit OK. Let's go back into the query and see exactly which step is failing and then invoke a more dynamic way of file name discovery. So right-click edit the query. To make sure I'm not looking at stale data, I'll go up and do a refresh preview and we can see that the query fails. So something in here is looking for zone one, but remember the file is now called zone A. So we'll click go to error and it's right here in the change type step. So if we look at the step just before that, we promoted the first row to a header row. Well, just before that, when we were using the generic headers, the column used to be called zone one. So when it got promoted, the first column was called zone one, but now it's called zone A. So when we do our data type selection, we're trying to change zone one to text that's hard coded. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is delete this change type step because I think doing the data typing on all of these columns is a bit premature because this is before we've unpivoted them. So any data type settings performed at this point are just going to be lost. So let's delete that step. So now let's keep going through the query. We remove the averages column. We unpivoted the data, but the unpivot is looking for zone one. Let's go back to a previous step. So before we perform the unpivot, we need to change this name from whatever it is to something like zone number. So I'm going to temporarily just rename this to something like ABC123. We'll insert the step. But instead of saying change zone A to ABC123, remember that's just temporary, I want this to be a position number. So essentially change the first column, whatever it's called, to ABC123. So to do this, I'm going to extract the current first column's name. This will be done using a table column names function. So we'll erase this and we'll do table column names, open parentheses. I need to point to the previous step name, which was called remove columns three. So pound sign double quote. So removed columns three. And then after the close parentheses, define a column position. And this will be the first column. So I put zero in curly braces because remember Power Query starts counting at zero. We'll hit okay. So the previous step, when we remove the averages column, that first column was called zone A. It'll be called whatever the first table in the first PDF that's read. But now we do a rename by position. So that temporary name is ABC123. I'll unpivot the other columns, but now I'll have to change this from the hard-coded zone one to the ABC123. We'll merge our month and year together, set the data type for that date column so it turns those into proper dates, remove the error rows, we'll change the data type of the value column, and then rename the first column. Of course, the rename was looking at the hard-coded zone one. That will have to be our temporary name. We'll close and load this back out, and notice our output table is now zone letters instead of zone numbers. Now the pivot table has its own independent refresh, so we have to right-click refresh that, and now we have A, B, C, D. If I went back to the source folder, and suppose I delete zones A, B, and C, I'll go back to Excel, right-click refresh the query. Now there's only 60 rows. Right-click refresh the pivot table. I only have zone D. If I were to put those zone letter PDFs back along with a zone number PDF, we'll go back to Excel, right-click refresh the query, right-click refresh the pivot table. 
So that's how we can write a query to extract very specific tables from PDFs based on the content of those tables. There were many tricks involved in this little project. Some tricks can be used outside of this project. So take those little tidbits of knowledge and apply them in a variety of situations. Don't forget to download the solution file for this video so you can examine all of the M code that I created with documentation. And as always, let me know in the comments what you think about this. Thank you for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.